All right, guys, happy Thursday. And yo, check it, check it. I'm about to end T.I.'s whole career. Oh! Yep, it's going to be a fun trip down memory lane. Plus, we're going to talk about Kiki Palmer, her ex, Darius Jackson, the one that was allegedly in that video beating her, gives advice on Twitter to, quote, wait till marriage and make sure God is the center of your relationship. Hmm, interesting. And later on, we're going to go through some videos on TikTok that are providing migrants with step-by-step instructions for hiring a smuggler and illegally entering America. Who is behind this funded effort to get illegals over the border? The answer may surprise you. All that and more today coming up on Candace Owens. So there has very much been a vested media effort to make sure that black America hates Candace Owens. And it's not just Candace Owens, by the way. It's to make sure that black America hates any black American who starts talking about conservative principles and realizes that there is an intentional effort to destroy black America. And one of these ways, obviously, is through music. And I recognized this a long time ago. Back in 2019, I'm going to take you guys down memory lane in case you don't remember it. I got a phone call and basically Diddy was hosting this summit, the Revolt Summit, and they wanted to invite one conservative onto the stage to talk about politics and, you know, everything that was at play that year. And of course, as a Trump supporter, Candace Owens was persona non grata in the black community. But I was very encouraged to have been invited because here's the thing. When people say Candace doesn't do black media, the truth is, is I don't get invited to do black media because, again, there is an intentional effort to make sure there is a wall between conservative thoughts and the black American thought process that's coming through them via the media. So I went down, I was so excited. And there were so many important things that I said on that stage. But rapper T.I. seemed that he was hell-bent on making sure that black Americans hated me on that stage, back and forth. He created this moment. Take a listen. If, I want to be I able to hear them. answer the question and you're just going to boo when I say a, a slavery was all over the world, which is a fact, why are you booing a fact? Finish because you're point. making light of... No, I'm not. You're making light I of haven't the gotten to my points. I'm not of making... people that look like us. You can't all make right. light of that. That ain't nothing you breeze over. I haven't even over. finished the sentence. How am I making you light of anything? You started with some boo. Okay. You started with some BS, he said, and the media had their moment. They had a way to make sure that people didn't listen to the rest of the conversation. They painted me as someone that got up there and defended slavery. Here's just one of the headlines that was written about me after that moment, but it was all over hip-hop media. T.I. drags Candace Owens at Revolt Summit. Which period was America great? Again, nowhere in none of these media pieces. T.I. destroys Candace Owens over MAGA and slavery talk. But nowhere was it what I actually said. (laughs) Nowhere did they want Black Americans to hear the words that were coming out of my mouth. And I bet now Black Americans wish they did hear it. Take a listen to what I actually said on that stage that they never saw. Right now, the Black vote is the most important vote in the country. There's a very small window before our vote's not going to matter. These conferences won't matter, matter, and us sitting here won't matter. Because illegal immigration, if you're looking at the numbers, every new birth in this country, 60% of all new births are Hispanic Americans. And the Democrats are about, you, listen, listen, you're, you're saying, mm, uh, let, me, let, me, let me get to the point. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with it. They are, I, I say illegal is the new black because it's true. And there's a reason why they're, they're advocating for open borders. Right now, our vote means a lot, but new births of black Americans have stagnated. The population growth within black America has stagnated. So the things that I pay attention to are the numbers. I pay attention to the birth rates in this country, which is why I'm, I'm pro putting something down to stop illegal immigration. So there it is. Obviously, T.I. was acting as a gatekeeper and the black media, and I don't even know who owns the black media, was acting as a gatekeeper to that information. And now black Americans are waking up to how true that is. This is now a problem, not just for black America, but for all of America. But particularly, as I said, it was going to impact black Americans first. So... Take a listen to what Pastor Brooks was saying regarding migrants in Chicago on the news. Joining me now is Pastor Corey Brooks, CEO of Project Hood. Pastor Brooks, how utterly demoralizing um, it must be for these residents. What's going on? Um, Is he a reflection of the way others are feeling? 
Well, he seems to be a reflection of what others are feeling. You know, Chicago is a microcosm of what's going on all across the country. Uh, we've been made a sanctuary uh, city, and, uh, you know, typically uh, the citizens would have something to say about that. But here in Chicago, we're not getting we're not able to practice a true democracy by saying if we want to be a sanctuary city or not. And as a consequence, um, they're being flooded into our neighborhoods um, and, and lots of funds are being invested uh, into individuals who are not American citizens. And for a lot of people, uh, that seems to be a major problem. And he's not the only one. Some other gatekeepers are now acknowledging what I said five years ago, pretending that they care about the black community when they, they don't actually care. They are just suddenly saying it because it's, like I said on stage, too late. Al Sharpton also acknowledging that there is an invasion at the border and it's impacting black America. Take a listen. Couldn't there be some kind of public pressure put in the next couple of days in some of these senator states saying, why are you allowing this to continue? Because at the end of the day, senators have to deal with their voters. And at the same time, it uh, in the bill, you give uh, uh, money to Gaza, to, to, to civilians in Gaza and Israel. But the border, I mean, we're looking every day at the invasion of migrants and they're playing a time game with politics on this. Everything that you're seeing, of course, is just acting. Al Sharpton knew the information that I knew then, but he wanted to wait until it was too late so that he can pretend that he, in fact, represents the voice of black America. So take a look at this. Yesterday, rapper Meek Mill tweeted this. I watch Candace Owens all the time, too. And it seems that for the first time, black Americans are beginning to listen to what I am saying. I'm noticing that they're sharing clips, that they're saying, oh, she's suddenly starting to make sense. No, I've been saying the same thing since the very beginning, since I appeared onto the scene. You just weren't allowed to hear it. And it's time to ask ourselves why that is. Why is it that black America is prevented from being allowed to actually advance? And I'm talking about music, obviously. I'm talking about the intentional influence of all of these artists who do not represent black culture. No, they represent the corrosion of black culture. They are being artificially, obviously, distributed to convince black minds that this is somehow ours and that we should fight to defend it. And so I'm happy that on The Breakfast Club, probably the most listened to talk radio show in black America, they've tackled this topic. They covered me talking about Ice Spice's song Fart. And here is what they had to say about it. Take a listen to Charlemagne the God. Candace Owens is 34 years old. Of course, she's not going to get Ice Spice's fart. But there's a generation of kids that I hope enjoy nobody it. get an Ice Spice fart. I hope Ice Spice would have the coof to not fart around people. Bro, they love the song fart. Like, the song is a, is a catchy song. The kids like the song. Uh, they do that, like the song. But listen, everybody's, not entitled, to their, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Because you, you don't like it. <laughs> That's just the truth of the matter. But I, I don't. I, neither do I. But I know that ain't for me. Yeah, Candace Owens right. We fall into society, y'all. Maybe she should have named it something else. Something cuter, like poot. Like, poot's a cuter. You know what I mean? Fart just sounds harsh. Because she says, you're not the ish. You're not even a poot. But it, it could still have the same lyrics. Maybe just a different title. You're not the ish. You're not Maybe even a poot. breaking wind. You're the ish. You're not even breaking wind? Backfiring. <laughs> you're not the ish. You're not even backfiring. Maybe gas. That's what it should have been called. Gas. gas. Still waiting on my invitation to the Breakfast Club, but I appreciate the fact that Charlemagne the God is acknowledging that, yes, this is a fall. Who is allowing it? These are the questions that we should be asking. Later on in that segment, Charlemagne says, well, this is the best art that Ice Spice can create. You know, she's, what, 22, 23 years old. And I would just like to remind everybody, in case you forgot, what 18-year-old Black Americans were creating long before an Ice Spice came around. There was the music that I grew up on. There was Lauryn Hill. Lauryn Hill in The Sister Act was about 18 years old when she sang like this. God of glory, Lord of love, hearts unfold like flowers before thee. That is the black culture that I recognize. That is the sound of black music that I recognize. And everything around us, again, not just black culture, but in American culture, has been in a full, steep decline. We're all recognizing it. And now it's time for us to try to accurately identify who is sitting behind this, who wants to see America fall, because it is so obvious that that is the implicit goal here. And that's all I'm going to say about that.
Sleep is the foundation of our mental and physical health. You must have a consistent nighttime routine to function at your very best. So if you're struggling with sleep, you need to check out Beam. Beam's Dream Powder contains a powerful all-natural blend of ingredients, including magnesium L-theanine. And it's not just your run-of-the-mill sleep aid either. It's concoction carefully crafted to help you rest without the grogginess that often accompanies other sleep remedies. Several people on my team use Beam's Dream Powder and are always saying how great it works. Today, my listeners get a special discount on Beam's Dream Powder, their best-selling hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar. Now available in delicious flavors like cinnamon cocoa, chocolate peanut butter, and mint chip, better sleep has never tasted better. Just mix Beam Dream into hot water or milk, stir or froth, and enjoy before bedtime. If you find yourself struggling to sleep, give it a shot. If you want to try Beam's best-selling Dream Powder, take advantage of their New Year's sale. For a limited time, you'll get 40% off when you go to shopbeam.com dot com slash Candice and use code Candice at checkout. That's shop B E A M dot com slash Candice with my promo code Candice for up to 40% off your order. Okay, now it's time for some topics du jour. Before we get into our first topic, I want to remind you to hit the subscribe button to this YouTube channel. We are on the road to 3 million subscribers. All right, so what are the numbers? At least according to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, the Border Patrol had some 8.5 million illegal immigrant encounters from the fiscal 2020 and one year through to November. So that's crazy. And aside from the 8.5 million encounters, they are saying that there are also those who entered the U.S. illegally with the express intention of avoiding detection. And they put that number at around 1.7 million getaways, which means they never even encountered the, uh, the border protection. Now, that would make it that over the past three years, there's approximately 10 million illegal immigrants that have crossed the border. That's a shocking number. That's a shocking number. And the media is now suddenly paying attention Now, the thing that I want people who watch this show to understand, and I think I say this virtually in every episode, is that the media is a part of some sort of a conglomerate that is intent on keeping you stupid. So even when they seem to be finally telling you the truth, as I just showed you in the monologue, it's five years after the fact. That means they've just been suddenly allowed to acknowledge it because it's suddenly inescapable. But initially they were telling you that, oh no, to even acknowledge this, the idea of building a wall, Trump is racist. I can't believe Candace would support Trump. You, these people are xenophobic. These people are just looking for an opportunity uh, to live their lives. They're all uh, just impoverished and want an opportunity that America can afford. So when you suddenly see the media embarking on telling you what's actually happening in America, it's just because they got the orders that say, okay, now you can say what's happening because it's too late. What are are we going to do now? Who cares if 60 Minutes goes down to the border now after there's been 10 million illegal crossings and they're going to pretend that they're doing real journalism? These are all actors. These are bought and paid for actors, in my view, coming directly from the CIA and Operation Mockingbird. These people are trained to pretend that they are giving you information. So watch this clip that is now on 60 Minutes. This just was from last week. Apparently, 60 Minutes is now interested in investigating what's happening on the border. But they are telling at least the truth that illegals are getting instructions on how to cross the border seamlessly. Take a listen. We wondered how all of these migrants knew about this particular entryway into California. The answer was in their hands. Oh, you learned on TikTok. (laughs) Posts we found had step-by-step instructions for hiring smugglers and detailed directions to that hole we visited. We were struck by just how orderly and routine it all seemed. We were struck by just how orderly it seemed. Oh, we're just investigating this now. No, you are working with the Biden administration. You guys have gotten the numbers that you wanted to get over the border, something like 10 million. And now you're going backwards and pretending to do real journalism. But if you have been watching this show for years, we've been talking about how orderly it really is at the border and what they haven't mentioned there. Years ago, I had a young woman that was on my show. She went down to the border. I think it was back in 2018. And these are real IDs that I am showing you. She was showing the systemized process, how systematic it was, that they were receiving folders from the U.N., from the United Nations, which was instructing them on what to do as they flew over. This was a an actual boarding pass of somebody that was flying from another country 
to go to our border and to cross it, to drop their ID. She had an entire bag filled with them as instructed to them from the United Nations, okay? So here is the question that I will ask now that people are starting to recognize that the concept of building a wall wasn't so racist. Why is there a well-funded effort regarding which the UN is a part of for our borders to be invaded? And this has been going on again for years. Donald Trump was the first person to say it. It may have sounded crazy when he said build that wall. It may have sounded, what what is he talking about? But now every single person should recognize that this is real. There is a real invasion at our border. We don't know who is coming over into this country. And the Biden administration and their goons in the media are hell-bent on allowing this invasion to take place. So I wanted you guys to have that information since it seems that people are hearing it perhaps for the first time. I want to move on here because there is something that I want to respond to. Uh, a lot of people, not actually, I shouldn't say a lot of people. I want to, I want to be real here. The majority of people recognize what I am saying about these new artists. It's nothing personal against these individuals, like Ice Spice and like Sexy Red, but rather to point to why on earth these individuals would be handed platforms, tons of followers, and Grammys for the non-music that they are making. Okay, you should not win a Grammy. You should not be up for awards if this is the kind of music that you make. Some people wrote to me in the comments and said, Sexy Red supports Donald Trump, Candace. So look who you are distancing yourself from. This is a person who likes Donald Trump. You should be platforming this. And apparently I went and I dug up. And it is true that Sexy Red was a Trump supporter or is a Trump supporter, rather. This is her speaking on a podcast this past weekend with Theo Vaughn from four months ago. Take a listen. Do you think more people are going to support Trump now in the I hood like or no? Yeah, they support him in the hood. Because at first, I don't think uh, people was f-ing with him like they thought he was racist, saying little s**t and, you know, against women. But once he started getting black people out of jail and giving people their free money, oh, uh, baby, we love Trump. We need him back in office. Yeah, that, a little bit of free money goes a long way. We huh? need him back. Because, yeah. baby, them <laughs> we, checks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, them stimulus checks, Trump, we miss you. So two things can be true at the same time. Obviously, it is a good thing that Sexy Red is standing up against the racist narrative that is always trying to stop black Americans from voting against their interests. Obviously, uh, a better a better candidate for black America would be Donald Trump, which is why I supported him rather than the Democrats who are hell-bent on destroying black America via a ton of ways, welfare policies among them. And to be honest, My least favorite thing that Trump did was the stimulus package. So that's something that I would love to discuss and dispute with her. But also, Sexy Red and the music that she distributes is harmful to Black America. What she represents is harmful to Black America. I am not going to say that because you vote like me, I am going to support the music that you are putting upon the youth in Black America. Can Sexy Red change her mind? Can she become somebody else? I hope. This is what has always been my hope for Cardi B, right? That they actually recognize that they are being used to peddle filth to the black community like drug dealers. And in case you don't recognize just how severe what I am talking about is, this is what has been making the rounds in the media over the last couple of days. Sexy Red just had a baby. She literally just gave birth. And she decided to share some photos from her in the hospital and make some fun music while she was giving birth. Take a look at some of these photos. Yes, that is sexy red, bent over, uh, touching herself. Yes, obviously we have censored this photo of her with her legs spread in just a really disturbing manner. There's no other way to say it. This is, this is actually disturbing. It should disturb you. There's nothing funny about this. This is crass. This is debased. This is no way a mother should act at all. But of course, this makes its rounds in the media. And what is the response to a young black person that is seeing that this person is getting attention? What is the response to any young individual if they recognize that, okay, I can become famous and I can get quick money and my music will be distributed if, I'm, if I have no shame? right? If I remove myself from shame, if I put my body all over the internet, if I'm constantly selling sex and I'm talking about drugs and hip hop, this is rot in the black community. I will never support it. Doesn't mean that I have a problem with Sexy Red personally. In fact, I'd love to have her on the show. I would talk to her about this because I think it's going to start with an awakening. All of these artists have to understand that they are being used. Hollywood is being used. And as I've said on multiple episodes, it is not just black America. It is all of America. The music has become filth. 
There is an effort to make people stupid, to load them up with drugs, and to make it so that they cannot be successful. I am convinced that America has become a slave colony, and the purpose of which is just to fund endless wars and to not even be able to comprehend what it is that we are doing outside of our own borders. And by the way, those are just the still photos. She also released a video to go along with it. So this is Sexy Red again from the hospital, having just given birth or about to give birth. Take a look. Twerking in the hospital before you go through the process of giving birth, throwing dollar bills. Is that supposed to be funny? Well, I'm pleased to say that Black America didn't find it funny. Black America said that it represented a new low, and that has kind of been the sentiment that I have seen expressed. Let's keep it up. Let's have the courage to call trash trash. It's the only way we're going to be able to clean it up. All right, guys, moving on. This is genuinely, in my opinion, hilariously sad. So we had covered a while ago on this podcast the drama that was going on with Kiki Palmer and her baby daddy, Darius Jackson. My assessment was that it was an incredibly toxic relationship. Uh, recapping very quickly, Kiki Palmer was grinding on a club. They, she had just had a baby. She was kind of half naked. You know, he was tweeting things against how she was dressing as a mother, how she, you know, obviously was not presenting herself quite conservatively. And then something really big happened where Kiki Palmer dropped a video and allegedly in that video, and it looks to be him, uh, is J Darius Jackson putting hands on her, actually you know, beating her is, is what we saw. Again, I'm saying allegedly because I think this is still working its way through the court process. And so Darius Jackson has now come out. He is shading Kiki Palmer by giving some advice on Twitter regarding marriage. Here's what he had to say. He wrote, I feel for the dads that gave up when it came to custody. It's mentally, emotionally, and physically draining. You'll lose yourself. My spirit is too strong to give up but I totally understand. I have pondered it. Thank God I have an amazing circle. In another post, he wrote, for those who don't have kids, and this is something that I will emphasize to my son, wait till marriage and make sure God is the center of your relationship. There's a rule book that's been given to us thousands of years ago. Best to follow it because everything else leads to chaos. Now, if you took this advice and you removed it from the situation, of him allegedly beating Kiki Palmer, I'd say, wow, this is amazing advice. But you are really going to have to miss me with suddenly becoming a pastor after we just all watched horrific footage, because I want to be very clear. Even in households where there is atheism, men know not to put their hands on women. It's just something that men recognize. Women are obviously smaller than men. There is absolutely no excuse ever, no excuse ever, least of all saying, well, I wasn't following the good book and the Lord, and that's the reason why I was beating my wife. By the way, there are tons of people who do allege that they are pastors and allege that they are good people who similarly put their hands on women. So please do not hide behind God here, okay? Let's not hide behind God. This so reminds me, by the way, in case you guys don't understand the memes that the I miss my granny memes. It's it's totally another one of these moments. Way back, I think it was in you know, 2018 or 2017 when Cardi B was pregnant with her first child and she and Offset were just married. And it, a huge scandal broke out where a woman came forward and said that she was having an affair with Cardi B's husband, Offset. And as people were waiting for him to respond to the allegations of his affair, which wound up being true because they split for a moment, he instead posted this. A photo of him sitting, oh, poor Offset, with the caption, I miss my granny. Oh, you miss your granny, Offset. You miss your granny after you've been caught cheating on your wife and who's pregnant. How amazing. You gotta love that when men do that. Oh, I wanna talk about God now. I miss my granny. That's what's going on. No, you've done something for which you owe an apology for, a meaningful apology for, an explanation for to the public. So let's not turn into a pastor or turn into a man that suddenly misses his granny when you know that you have done things that are wrong, okay? It is, it is such an act of cowardice. It's so obviously laughable. Um, and I'll just leave it right there. All right, guys, I very quickly want to remind you, and I, I hate to say this, but no, I don't hate to say it. It's just the truth. I woke up today like it was Christmas morning 
because this is the day, obviously, that Tucker Carlson is going to be dropping his interview with Vladimir Putin. It has been insane, speaking of the desperation of the media to tell us lies, to look at all of the headlines and the publications that are already trying to brainwash people into believing that they should not accept anything that they hear in this interview. They would only be doing this if it was because they knew that something in there was something that they were trying to prevent us from hearing. The obvious conclusion being that we have absolutely no business being in Ukraine We recognize that to be true without even knowing any details. It just doesn't make sense that Congress just keeps sending billions and billions of unaccounted funds over to Ukraine. We know this is some continuation of what we did in 2014. We installed Zelensky as president. Um, This was done under Obama. You should learn about what we were doing in Ukraine. We know that we have labs that are also operating in Ukraine. Bio labs are operating in Ukraine. And... This has all been some theater, some sort of a dramatic theater into convincing us that this is some moral democratic mission when something feels more sinister. What is it that we are doing overseas? What are we involved in? How is it that Hunter Biden had business deals in Ukraine and suddenly we decide that we have to fight this proxy war with Russia? It feels like corruption because it is corruption. And so I implore all of you, to watch the interview tonight. Tucker Carlson is going to be dropping it on his website um, as well as on his YouTube channel. It will obviously be circulated everywhere, but make sure that you watch it in its entirety by yourself before you allow the media to pollute you with ideas about what you should think about that interview. Take it with a grain of salt. You know, you're not watching it because you want to support Russia. You are watching it because you want to understand what is happening in your country. And there has been a lot that has been happening in the West that we have no understanding of whatsoever. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. And obviously we will be reporting on whatever it is that is said on this show tomorrow. All right, let's jump into some of your comments regarding episodes past. First, regarding that really bizarre article uh, that was covering Bill Maher saying that he wasn't going to reveal the conversation he had with Kanye because he's a charming anti-Semite, but also he had a great time with Kanye, but trust that you can't see the interview. I don't like it. Drop the interview or don't say anything about it. Kevin McLaughlin writes, censorship is now a word like racism. Everyone throws it around and it's, lo- and it's losing its meaning. Bill Maher is a private individual and can choose to air what he wants or not, and Bill has a right to broadcast what he wants. Kanye does not have a right to have all of his views broadcast on private channels. Kevin, I said I totally respect Bill Maher making the decision to censor an interview, which is what he did, obviously, because he had it and then said, I'm not going to show it to you. What I don't respect is then talking about it because then what he's doing is he is giving us a takeaway regarding an interview that we have not seen. So Bill Maher should have just simply said nothing and made the decision to withhold it. Instead, he came forward and called someone a charming anti-Semite, which to me seems very strange. Helena writes, how can you say you have free speech in America? You are canceling an interview. You are canceling people and destroying people for saying the wrong things. I totally agree on that some things are better left unsaid, but freedom of speech in America is just something that sounds good to the rest of us. I watch from Denmark and agree on so many of your opinions. You are the kind of person I want to listen to. You call a spade for a spade. Yes, there definitely has been what I would say over the past few years, a recognition that they are constraining speech in America. I saw some of the people that commented, you know, that that felt like what CNN does. And they're like, we're not going to air Donald Trump's speech, but we're going to tell you what he said. Like, his speech is so dangerous. We're not going to air it. But if there's anything important, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you what it is. And so that becomes almost a funnel, right? Which is why it has been so important for there to be uh, media organizations, alternative media organizations and independent voices uh, who are covering these topics. And that's why they really, really, really wanted Twitter to go away. They wanted full control over Twitter because they never, ever um, envisioned a world in which they wouldn't control every single voice in media. And that is the world that we are now going into. And I do still think that we have free speech in America, but we are in the middle of fighting like hell to maintain it, is what I would say. Bernadette Green writes, censorship has been going on for a long time in America. Now it's more insidious. To get to the truth, I have to do deep investigations to only get a portion of the truth. As an African-American, I have always seen America's hypocrisy, but now the brainwashing is insidious. And yes, I very much agree that it is a level of brainwashing. It is a psychological operation. They repeat things that simply are not true, and they expect people to 
just instantly believe the narrative. But people are starting to wake up to that is the main point. And obviously, this Tucker and Putin interview is going to be a huge contributor, I believe, to a mass awakening that what our media tells us simply is not what is actually happening, but rather what our state wants us to believe is happening. And my gut instinct is that it's the military industrial complex that is controlling the media. Um, and it's because it, it just is trillions and trillions of dollars being wiped away from the American taxpayer going overseas into territories. We don't know what's really happening. We're always just sold that we're fighting for democracy. And we're, we have questions now. What, what really are we fighting for? How are we constantly fighting? Why can't we take a pause on some of that fighting? Why are, is everything in America suddenly in decline and you're telling us that we're doing amazing things overseas. None of it makes any sense. And I'm hoping that Tucker can assign some sense to it tonight. Regarding all of you who are watching from other countries, we have a ton of you writing. Tanika writes, I watched from Bulgaria. I lived in the U.S. 26 years. It could never get used to the feeling like I'm an invisible prison where pharma doctors, police, and the music industry directly interfere with politics. It's locked in matrix outside the states. I feel more free. That is really interesting because there is some sort of a combination here. Obviously, throughout this entire episode, the music industry is producing filth. It's intentional. And the pharma doctors, obviously, you guys know, but I am super anti-vax because I have done all of my research, and that is true. It is a part of the web of lies, and Americans are finally willing to have that conversation because of COVID. All of this to say that there is a mass awakening happening in America. We are starting to recognize that we have been equally as propagandized as other nations may have been propagandized throughout human history. And I think it's a good thing. It's why I remain so optimistic about what's happening. Honest to God writes, watching from Sri Lanka, you help make things make sense in a world that doesn't make sense anymore. I'm always praying for you, George, and the children. Thank you, you guys. I always say keep up the prayers because I am convinced it is the only thing that is keeping me safe is that there are so many people around the world that are praying for my protection. And when people ask me, when they come up to me, what can I do for you? I always say, just pray. Just pray because I am going to continue to fight like hell for truth. And hopefully people like Tucker Carlson will continue to fight like hell for truth. I know people are worried. What are they going to do to Tucker Carlson? Are they going to kill him? No, they cannot do what they have done to Julian Assange. Uh, I think, in fact, we should probably revisit what they did to Julian Assange. Maybe we'll do that next week or tomorrow, really understanding what happened to him when he broke what should have been the biggest story ever about what were in the emails. And yeah, I, I don't know what they're going to do to Julian Assange. I don't even, I think he's up for one last appeal and they're not going to allow him to have it in my view. But we'll talk about that more on a later episode, maybe tomorrow. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is all the time that we have for today. But tomorrow is Friday and it's going to be a great day. I'll see you then.